Hi everyone, this is Sri Vitsa Venkatachari from Informatica Technical Support. Today I would be giving a presentation on troubleshooting some of the basic issues that we face in BCA framework. BCA framework stands for Business Content Integration, which is one of the components that we provide with Power Exchange for SAP Net Fever. So the agenda for the day would be we will first go through some of the common problems that we face in the BCA framework. Then we will go through some of the SAP transaction codes, then some power center troubleshooting tips that could be used to troubleshoot BCA framework issues. And finally, we will end it with um, how to verify the data load from the SAP with the um, data stage in the source of BCA table. So let's start out with uh, some of the common problems in the BCA framework. So the first step is um, using the BCA wizard to generate the mapping. So when you use the BCA wizard, some of the basic error that the user might get might be owing to the authorization. So I have listed some of the authorizations that the user need to have. You may want to refer to the documentation for additional authorizations. So for example, if he imports a hierarchy um, data source, if he generates a mapping for a hierarchy data source, it's possible that the segment name might come with no associated field segments. That's because that S underscore ID, OC, DEFT authorization isn't there. So similarly, uh, some other functionalities might not be working fine if you don't have proper authorizations. So one more thing that the user might face when creating the mapping is with the uh, choosing the transfer method. So if your IDAC segment exceeds 1,100 characters, uh, it is imperative that you choose TRFC transfer method. So for only those all within 1,100 characters, you can use an IDAC transfer method. Um, so uh, otherwise, if you try to uh, activate the data source in some other transfer method, you will get an error saying that there is an error activating data source. So now let's look at what happens with the processing mapping once it's generated? Some of the basic issues that you might face is that the processing mapping, which was working fine in one of your environments, doesn't work in the other higher environments. This could be due to the reason that when you created the logical system, you associated with the associate and basic IDAC type with it. So um, if the IDAC, basic IDAC type had changed across different environments, then the IDAC interpreter that we have in the processing mapping would not be able to parse the IDAC properly. So you need to make sure that you have created the logical system um, with the same IDAC type, basic IDAC type across all environments. That's one reason why your processing mapping might not be working. Another reason why the processing mapping might not work is with regards to the staging table. If the staging table has unordered data, which happens in some cases like uh, in Teradata, which does not order the data, in the, uh, it does not insert in the order as an Oracle database would do. So for that, there are a couple of ways you could resolve this. You need to modify the source qualifier in your processing mapping and make sure that you order by uh, the document number and the IDAC record. And a uh, query for this is available uh, in the knowledge base articles in our community's Informatica site. And one more thing you could do is you can enable row level processing, which takes care of that issue when there's an unordered data, but it can also increase the performance when you enable row level processing. So there is one more thing that you could look for is whether the IDAC itself has any errors in it. In that case, it might be going to your error group in the IDAC interpreter. So in that case, you may want to look at the staging table and see what kind of IDAC records you have got. So now we have covered the BCA mapping wizard, and then we have covered the processing mapping generated out of it. Now let's look at the listener. Um, this is the most important part where uh, most of the issues might occur. So uh, the common complaint is that 
uh, a request was sent to the SAP system, but then um, no records were extracted um, through the listener. The first thing to do would be that you should go to the WE05 transaction, the SAP, and then check the status of the sent IDAR. So if you see in the W0 of a transaction um, corresponding to each segment, you will see whether the IDAC is in processing state, which will be marked by yellow, or if it is green. In this case, it, it has been sent to the partner profile. Then um, check the RS info uh, outbound IDAC partner profile in WE20. Uh, this would this RS info message type will have outbound IDAC options that you should have set it as transfer immediately. If you had sent as collect IDACs and then transfer, then it would just collect the IDACs and you may have to run a background job to transfer it to the uh, power center. So uh, if you had selected collect IDACs, then it might be collected in the SAP system and you may not be um, getting it in the BCA listener. And one more issue where your BCA listener may not be um, writing any data to the stage table is um, when your table is blocked by some blocks on rows or some, or some other reason, the target database is blocked. So this uh, results in the writer thread um, holding the buffer blocks and not writing any of the data to the target. And correspondingly, the reader thread cannot push any more data to the writer thread. And this will result in the reader not reading any more data from the SAP system. So um, you may want to do a stack trace. We have a tool called PM Stack, which you can use to um, generate stack traces on the running process. Get the process ID for the listener and run a couple of stack traces. Um, I should say three stack traces over a interval of every five minutes. And then we could see where um, the bottleneck is. So if you find that it's held up in the Write a thread, then we can uh, take some measures to uh, unblock all the uh, locks on the target database. And that way, you could resolve the problem. So these are a couple of scenarios that I have covered here. Um, that could be some other scenarios also. Um, in that case, please um, refer to the knowledge base article um, provided in communitystudyinformatica.com. So, some of the transaction code that you could use for troubleshooting are, are listed here. So um, when you see that um, there is no data being sent, you need you can check first whether the connection exists between SAP system and power center. You can go to SM59 and do a connection test. That will verify if the connection is established under BC business running. Uh, one thing you may want to note is that um, would do an RFC accept and start listening on a particular DRFC port. But the connect, whether the connection established or not had, would be tested only from the SAP side from SM59. And then um, in some cases, um, say your BC listener went down for some reason because of some crash or because um, of some node going down. Um, if we had selected TRFC transfer method, then all these unsent TRFC requests are queued up in your SM58 transaction. So you can go to SM58, and then once your BC listener comes up, you could resend those TRFC requests. So um, that is what the SM58 would be used for. And as I was mentioning, W05 already, that's where you can check the status for RS info and RS request. Um, these two message types would be logged in W05. You can see if the records have been sent properly or not. And then you could also see W20 to verify if the, what is the packet size has been set for outbound IDACs, and what is the uh, transfer method, whether it's collect transfer and collect IDACs and transfer or transfer immediately. Those settings could be checked in W20. Then we have the RSA7, where you verify whether the uh, data for the delta request has been refreshed. So you would see that those data, the number of records which are delta changed from the previous extraction 
would be listed in the uh, RSA seven transaction. So you can verify how many records got inserted and if that corresponds to what you had in RSA seven. And some of the other tables that you could verify uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the VCA uh, processing mapping was generated properly are uh, how it's listed here. The RSBSA doc basically contains information about the logical system. The other tables they are used when you um, activate the data source rather than TRFC mode or an IDAC mode. So if there is any issue um, that doesn't let you activate a data source, you may want to check these tables and see if there are any duplicate entries for the same data source. And finally, I have given a query here, which you could use to verify the data that was loaded to the staging table. And this information could be found from the RS info staging table. So the RS info staging table is populated through the um, RS info basic IDA type and the source of VCA table is populated through the uh, basic IDA type Z SIM 1000 by default, but it could be based on whatever basic IDA type you configured for your logical system. So this RS info staging table does contain information on what what is the packet number, what is the RQ state at that time, and what is the record count that was sent at that time. So you can get the request ID from your BC listener or do the send request mapping session log and you can uh, use that request ID to find out um, in what state uh, your current load is and finally whether the record count that you got from RS info staging matches with what you loaded in the source of BCA table. So um, these are some basic issues that you have covered with the BCA framework. Um, I hope uh, this information was useful to you. Uh, if you have any feedback, please uh, provide your feedback to support videos at informatica.com or you could also tweet us at twitter.com slash Thanks for listening to the presentation. Good day. Bye.